What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Is it art? It's not art. Art should be funny. It's not art. Are they dead? They're dead. They're definitely dead. It's not any good. It's only good if you don't need to explain it. What do you mean it's performance? They're not doing anything. Are they dead? Why are they grumpy? Benders, homos. They're meditating. It's peace on earth. It's quiet. It's a protest about homelessness. That won't keep you warm. Blanca! It's like meditation. It's like roadkill. They've fallen out of an aeroplane, fallen from the sky. It's not art. What are you selling? What's the cause? What are you protesting about? Is it art? Caught in an action, frozen in an action, like the people from Pompeii. Whoa! Can you explain this? Are they having sex? They're having sex. It's performance art. It's like performance art. I think it's performance art. Art modern. Are they being paid for this? He's not homeless with those Nikes on. Oh, he's awake. I'll pay you five pounds to go and lie down with them. Dad, what are you doing? The likes of Tracy Emin. No, thank you. Art is supposed to be about having fun. They're sleeping. Why are they not smiling? Are they making peace? Are they real people? Who are the subjects? Ha! She blinked. What are they doing? I want to know what they're doing. What are they doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are they tramps? Can I lie down on them? She's making peace. Don't ruin her peace. I'm safe here. I think I'm safe here. Is it physics? They're trying to get a suntan. Never seen that before. Making peace. It's really getting to me now. I've got to find out what's going on. That was a reading of some of the vocal um, responses. And what I, I actually I didn't do, which I'll just do briefly for you now, is some of the facial expressions, because the public become a really kind of performative kind of element to the work, you know, and so there was quite a lot of like. And I'm not exaggerating, actually, by that. <laughs> so, um, so um, yeah, that was some of the facial expressions as well there. Um, so, Lay Me Down is an intervention on public in public space. A simple action 
the gesture of lying down. Performers use portable mirrored slats as resting places across the city to interrupt the vertical and conventions of public space. Lay Me Down brings bodies at rest and in repose to public spaces. Through a score of giving our weight, our body weight, letting go into gravity, softening the tissues of the body to allow for a close and weighted physical relationship to the ground in public space. A softening of the whole body and the self into the ground. And this quality and physicality is unusual, maybe kind of quite unusual to see in urban public space. So displaying the body as vulnerable, as passive, and as porous and tender. The performers and mirrored slats inhabit the horizontal, a low spatial dimension, disturbing the verticality and the pathways through public space. Stillness intervenes, disorientating the hectic corporate culture that is so prevalent and all-consuming a lot of urban public space today. And this quality of stillness and gentleness has a quiet but quite dynamic insertion into spaces that are kind of structured and choreographed for particular activities like shopping or catching a train. So the, um, the bodies lying down are further complicated by, or by touch, lying on top of each, uh, each other, giving weight into another body and the ground. A layering of bodies, slotting into, resting with, tangled, on top of, intertwined. This abstracts the associations of rest and brings more of a sculptural form to the performance. The layering of bodies opens a series of associations and readings. The bodies in positions of passivity, vulnerability, tenderness also brings notions of the private space into the public space. The states of softening and letting go into another body and the ground performs a kind of porous, open and vulnerable state that is maybe reserved for closer encounters with people or associations with more private, intimate spaces. In Lay Me Down, there is a, an exposing of this more private world into the public realm. So uh, sometimes the kind of readings of this at a glance kind of seem to, in the terms of the public's kind of response, kind of seem to get quite kind of um, reduced down to a few different kind of categories and variations within those categories of sex, death, poverty, protests, and sort of spiritual themes. Um, and then, you know, um, those would sort of maybe, as people stayed for a bit longer, sort of start to shift and change a little. So this is a Nottingham train station. So the spaces Lay Me Down have been performed in are Greenwich Peninsula in London, Nottingham train station, Snenton Market in Nottingham, Nottingham Contemporary, Bond Square, Oxford, outside, um, I think it's the Westcliff Shopping Centre here in Oxford, and the Radcliffe um, Camera Pedestrian Road. So it's been performed in a mixture of commercial spaces, throughway spaces, quieter spaces, and as one called it here in Oxford, one is town and one is gown. And how the piece kind of meets a space, its purpose, the architecture, the public, changes the piece each time. As the piece interrupts the pathways and public conventions of a space, so does the space alter and interrupt the work. So there's a kind of reciprocal negotiation of elements between the work and the space and the public. Uh, so this is Greenwich Peninsula, where, where um, I first tried, tested 
this idea. Um, Lay Me Down was first developed as a section from a lar larger work, Shift Construct, um, for the Now Gallery on Greenwich Peninsula. It was a section of the work where we occupied the outside public throughway from the tube station to the O2 centre. The public space at that time, so it might well have been developed by now, but it was, um, it was kind of in rapid sort of <laughs> development stages with um, the gallery, the Now Gallery, I think, got built in um, sort of, I think, like six months or something like that. Um, uh, so th this, this space seemed to kind of choreograph the public to move through the space in a particular pathway. There's nowhere to sit or rest, so there is a sense that the public have to keep moving through and a kind of dominance of verticality. This is in fact not public space at all. It's owned by Night Dragon property developers. So that it can seem like free space, and I think some of the other speakers today have been talking a bit about the, the kind of things feel as if they're public, and they seem to be free, but actually they're not, and there are quite kind of strict sort of modes of behavior um, in, in those places. Um, so kind of gaining permission to do anything that isn't just kind of like walking, standing, eating. <laughs> These kind of actions seem to, seem to kind of quite be something that you kind of now need to kind of gain permission for. Um, so um, uh, th I've been, you know, lucky enough to work with organisations that have kind of dealt with or talked to kind of those institutions for me. But I, it is a kind of thing that Anthony was talking about, how you get round something, and Haley was talking about the, the rubbings, you coming up with a kind of uh, script or something that one's going to say to to these people, and um, I just took a bunch of, um, I'm teaching a site module with the Roehampton students at the moment on the dance course there, and I took them all to the turbine hall to look at kind of movement in a kind of urban, <laughs> urban setting. And we were just gonna be doing a very simple score of um, walking, standing, um, sitting. And uh, we lasted about, uh, 15 minutes, and, and then the visitor experience people came and were <laughs> quite, quite <laughs> um, you know, we've been very generous with you, allowing you to do this in here, and, you know, and, and I probably should have got permission from them, but I really thought that just doing something as simple as walking and st standing and sitting would have, I thought I could get away with it, basically. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, the studio, it was quite a funny sort of thing. But anyway, we walked, so we got moved on and we went to the South Bank um, Centre. And um, the students wanted, we I set them up to do some little performances around the space, around find little locations to devise some performances. And they, um, one of them wanted to use a kind of cafe, sort of outdoor cafe space. And the security was kind of came down on them very kind of hard. And, uh, you know, it was funny because they kind of got very, very kind of freaked by this, this, um, this experience with the security. And it, you know, quite kind of knocked their confidence in terms of um, working with kind of moving in, in a space. So I was just thinking it's quite interesting because at the South Bank, I really think, oh, God, this is, you know, there's buskers everywhere. And, yeah, at the same time, you know, there's quite sort of particular rules for, for uh, things happening there. So, so I kind of wanted to speak a bit more about the kind of different roles that are in Lay Me Down. So there's um, the bodies at rest. Um, then there's the public that are a very strong role. And there's another role, which is what I call the kind of high-vis guardian role. <laughs> which Ben played a, <laughs> a key part in. Um, so um, the public have this very kind of performative um, component or kind of performative response to, to the work. So it becomes a kind of material in itself, part of the performance landscape of the space. Their responses become crucial to the work. How they stumble across the bodies, are surprised, ignore the performance, walk straight past, where they position themselves, where the slats are positioned in spatial relationship to the audience, public, the timing and the settling of their gaze and the time and length that they'll spend with the performance. 
and how they include themselves in the work. So particularly in Nottingham, we had lots of, um, of the general public um, include themselves with lying down. Um, so you heard my vocal responses earlier. So this, this was very much kind of lots of kind of physical responses of imitating or joining in um, and different kind of generations joining in as well. Um, so th this is um, a slide of two members of the um, public and they, uh, and they didn't know each other. So <laughs> and they lay like that with each other for maybe, I don't know, probably about a good 10 minutes or something. So it was, it was quite a kind of touching moment really. And so um, it was quite nice how this kind of, this quietness or this stillness kind of had quite a kind of uh, pervasive kind of quality. I'm just saying that, that, that there's actually, um, the piece is actually really hard to rehearse. You kind of can't rehearse it because it's, it needs the kind of public to kind of inform it of its, um, the work develops and just changes with the responses of each space and the people who inhabit the space. So the other role is the high-vis guardians, I'm calling them. <laughs> Um, since laying down, lay me down in Oxford, I'm keen to develop this this role even further. So there's, um, I think it's Shona. Her name is in in high vis there, and there was, um, I think, four of us for this performance. Um, in Nottingham, the guardians wore yellow t-shirts. In Oxford, they wore high vis jackets, and I kind of quite like this kind of officialness it gave and a kind of uniform costume. I like how this item of clothing has become something that is like a seal of approval and people wearing them can be assumed to have a role of kind of responsibility and kind of authenticate something or kind of to be trusted. Somehow you can trust them um, if they wear these kind of yellow jackets. Even if you can't, you can just buy them from a hardware shop. And I think that diamond, um, what was it that happened in re recently in London in Hatton Garden? I think one of the ways that they kind of got got into the building was just through putting on high-vis <laughs> jackets. So, so it's kind of a strange sort of thing. So this role has kind of really kind of multifunctional role. Um, one is keeping the performers safe, being kind of intermediary between performers and the public, giving the public an explanation of what's happening, being in discussion with the public. So I'm keen to develop how we speak about the work rather than it being about explaining and giving an answer, but how to engage the kind of experience of the work. It's quite often, as soon as we kind of explained what was happening, um, the way that they looked at the piece shift sh stopped or literally it'd be like, oh, that's what's happening and walk off kind of thing. So um, it was kind of how to kind of prolong the kind of sense of sort of mystery or not knowing what something is. Um, and, and kind of prolonging that kind of multiple kind of readings. So kind of the work sort of it starts to kind of evaporate when you start to kind of <laughs> pin it down, maybe it becomes in a way less dynamic sometimes. I wanted to feel that the performers were safe and generally I think the public are safe, but there were some very aggressive remarks and physical actions um, towards the performers. Uh, I mean... It was a bit gratuitous to say, but one of the performers got kicked and, you know, there's some... So there is there's something for the high-vis people to kind of manage or sort of sense or um, intuit certain difficult kinds of situations or there was some kind of... Oh, look, I could give a... You know, all that sort of stuff kind of going on. <laughs> and some of that is actually quite, you know, in a way it's just kind of exposing or, you know, exposes a lot about kind of tough, really. Um, uh, so it's quite kind of a tricky role in that way, how to kind of manage that. Um, so Lay Me Down can expose sort of quite kind of reductive kind of ideas um, about the body and people and humanity um, from the public and where that kind of edge gets pushed in terms of kind of confrontation or abusive comments or sexist, homophobic comments and where to kind of protect or kind of um, allow for that just to kind of be there in the mix and things. Um, 
And also the people lying down can always get up and move as well. So I, want, I really want to develop the work um, more so that all the roles are interchangeable. The performers who lie down can drop that role and merge into the public, then become high-vis guardians. The public can lie down, maybe even become a high-vis guardian too. The high-vis can take off their jacket and come and lie down. So this is kind of a new sort of layer, layer of the work. Um, There's, there's Ben in, in, <laughs> in the background there. So um, it's just a very interesting that something as kind of soft or passive as lying down and resting could be something that's very kind of alarming and can be kind of disruptive or create disorder. So something sort of quite simple in its gesture can, um, can create kind of a disorientation of space and of hierarchy and... Um, relationships, really. Um, yeah, I think that's got to say about it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank Oops. Okay. Anyone got any questions? Um, they, they could be anything from, they tended to be quite long. I think some, sometimes, I mean, there was one where somebody lay for maybe half an hour. Then some were, they tended to be, you know, um, the minimum of a uh, uh, few minutes, maybe minimum five minutes or something. Yeah, so they were quite long, but there's, there was about... Um, there were seven performers for that. For, for Nottingham, there was 12 performers. And I was working in Nottingham with um, local performers and students. So oh, something that I'm very keen on with the, the work is that, the, um, that it's a very diverse kind of mix of bodies as well. So it's not... So there's a real kind of... Uh, yeah, kind of... And across kind of ages and things like that as well. So uh, that's quite important that the work is kind of open in that way and things. So there's a, even though there's maybe quite long stillnesses, there's quite a lot going on and how the kind of um, the bodies get laid on top of each other and then kind of the adding of these, which I didn't speak about, the kind of silky, shiny, kind of slight blingy kind of element <laughs> to the work, yeah. Yeah. Westcliff, and so it actually was quite kind of it was quite hard to gain access to a lot of places actually. So I haven't done it yet in a place where where I haven't kind of asked for permission first. You know, um, I mean, saying a Greenwich Peninsula, part of that lar that larger work shift construct is another section where uh, moving these kind of sticks around, and the police did get called with that one. But um, there's women with sticks. Currently, no <laughs> so um, that um, I think you know, I think it was all kind of cleared up and explained. Right? But um, but it's. Is that a useful part of shift construct to have the police there, or is that? No, is that outside the work? that's kind of outside the work. I mean, usually it is. You know, I think if I wasn't if I wasn't gaining permission from these sites, then um, then uh, that would have to come into that would be part of the dramaturgy element of the work, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, just in the tape with the students, you know, it was, you know, it was quite, um, it, was, it was quite kind of, you know, a moment that happened with the visitor experience people, sort of, um, <laughs> yeah, coming in. I, I, I yeah. Kind of, I kind of, this, this, this 
very railed around the mission. Yeah. I've been some of the kind of work I've been trying to bring forward has been around kind of delving very much into that. Mm. Uh, you know, I think there's a there's a crass punk band and there's a, uh, a song called uh, or, or a piece called Who's Re No Authority But Our Island. Mm. Uh, Yeah. Uh, and that was specifically without permission. Mm. One of the things, and I, one of those was on, was on private land, and I had you know intervention from security there, and then the police, uh, and then also somewhere else I had the police come along. But there's, there's a long, quite a long period of time, um, actually, when it didn't intervene. And one of the key things I was exploring about is you know, <coughs> this thing about permission. One thing I was aware of became really apparent is that on this, on the, in a public place, how much sanctioning there is that we are all doing all the time about what is acceptable and what's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The mm. amount of people that were like, you can't do that, you're going to get arrested. That's illegal, you can't do that. All these things, just because we were sitting on the ground gathering around a fire, something we've been doing for mm. you know, half a million years. Been, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so it was kind of, and then it was, it was made okay by the police when they came all the way here by me having a fire extinguisher. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like all the different things that you have to kind of, yeah, there was, I mean, there's been that definitely in some of these performances, having to kind of go, right, you can do this, but you have to make sure that you don't go near the florist or you make sure you, you know, you don't go near Starbucks or you make, you know, it's, yeah. And in working with the great tape, some of these things have come up around censorship. We don't think we're censoring when we engage with, say, you can't go near the florist. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, I'm very interested in trying to just... just yeah, nudge that, that pen, yeah, what, yeah. What's, what's that? Yeah, what's happening here? Why? why? Yeah. Well, I quite like that, you know, doing some of these things, it is, it is you know, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I find it difficult, the whole thing of even asking for permission in these kinds of spaces feels very, um, yeah, it's, it feels difficult, but... Um, I mean, certain things like the train station, maybe there's some, some of it you kind of think, oh, yeah, well, there is, maybe there is a kind of concern for certain things or something, so maybe it's, well, I don't know, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a kind of big question, yeah. Mm. Any, any other questions? <laughs> if not, well, thank you very much, Florence. Ooh.